this so possible from the first Greyhound meeting December 2014 to hosting the first Toaster Greyhound Derby last year. Um, pretty much down to, to this man and of course his family. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please put your hands together for Toaster Chairman, Mr. Lord, or Lord Heskin. Uh, thank you very much. I think there was a bit of information there. If I want to have a bet with Ben on the next general election of my future status under a momentum government. Um, now, today is in many ways um, uh, another unique experience in the uh, in the mad cat world of uh, toaster racecourse. Um, uh, firstly, I'd like to thank all of the staff at Soho House for all of the efforts being put in, the fact that they are allowing us to experiment in what is a nearly brand new location, uh, thus having a level of trust in the Greyhound racing community, not possibly shared in town around the world, um, and really the distinguished nature of our sport, which um, we're very, very lucky here today because we've got some very eminent gentlemen of the Fourth Estate. Now, when I came here, I haven't been here since 1976. 1976 was the year that James Hunt won the World Championship, and the previous two years to that, we used to come here a lot, because BBC Sports, Grandstand, and everything else were all based in these buildings. Incidentally, the man on the door was Jimmy Savile. But the, the world moves on, and the reality is that we have a sport which, under the advice of our chief executive, the board of directors of Toaster, invested, and have invested heavily, the shareholders have, in building the best Greyhound track, we believe, in the world. Now, that's only possible if there is a sport and a sport has an infrastructure made up of an awful lot of people who do an awful lot for not a lot of money, to be perfectly honest. Now, that's going to change, but it requires a completely new look at not only greyhound racing, but also the betting industry, horse racing, whatever you're betting on. And the most significant thing that is happening here today, one of many, is that this is being transmitted live on Toaster TV, on YouTube, around the planet. Now, I was in, I'm a director of an airline in Kazakhstan, and four weeks ago, I was able to watch Saturday morning Greyhounds from Toaster live on an iPhone in HD widescreen from Toaster TV. Now, it is not without significance that the only story on the back page of the Times newspaper sports section on Monday was about Real Madrid-Liverpool, but nothing to do with the game. It was all about BT allowing free access live to that game on YouTube. Now, there are many people who are shareholders of BT who might think that I'm making the same error they did when they bought the stock. But, if we move a little bit further than that, there are some clever, very clever people at BT, and technology used to be their great raison d'etre. In fact, without places like Marlesham Heath, this country would not have survived 1940, because out of Marlesham Heath and other locations came radar, which provided the key ingredient in winning the Battle of Britain. Now, the presence here today of eminent journalists from big newspapers is a huge <coughs> moment for greyhound racing. One of the objectives I set myself when we started at Toaster was to actually be able to read an article about greyhound racing or even a mention about greyhound racing that was not either in the racing post or possibly, possibly, very occasionally, in the back sections of the sun. Today, at least, we have the honour of their company. 
hopefully we have a story which is of interest because change is happening in the, this country in betting. I'm not going to bore you all, but if we look at the situation on the high street, what is happening to Philip Green is happening to 10,000 shops that are betting shops. One of the difficulties in the betting industry is that when it was legalized in 1960, in my youth, you used to look at turf accountants. The trouble today is that there's accountants, but the turf section has disappeared. I'm talking about the generic knowledge, and most importantly, a betting shop man manager who was trusted in order to have his judgment. That no longer exists. You cannot go into a betting shop manager where there is, with the noble exception of our sponsor, but where actually, on a day-to-day -day basis on the high street, he has the flexibility to make a decision without referring to higher authority. I'm always very nervous of higher authority. They're usually trying to suppress your rebellious activities. <laughs> now, Fontese is the biggest thing this year. The US Supreme Court is also a very big thing in the long term. For us at Toaster, we believe that the long term is all about global delivery with pool betting. What happens in the UK, what happens in the British Isles, and it's important to think about the British Isles because of the three centers of content generation, the United States, the British Isles, which is the UK and Ireland, and Australia, you have in time scale terms the purpose built platform in time to launch a global channel accessible to all. Fob teas. Fob teas are a great mystery. They always have been. But they were doomed, in my opinion, when the Daily Mail and the Guardian joined forces. This is a combination of Harold McMillan, when he referred to the Brigade of Guards and the NUM. I can tell you in a modern context, Fob teas were headed, unfortunately, to Mercy's Kenyon's The Undertakers. And that is consequently where they have finished up. But there is a great mystery, because it's rather like the three graces. It's the three mysteries. There were a great profusion of information, which was that 10,000 shops would immediately close. It was the end of betting as we knew it. Greyhound racing made no profits. Horse racing made no profits. Nothing made any profits. Football made no profits. Only fob teas make profits. Oh dear, well that's very difficult to understand. And then the government, it was made very clear this would actually build at least one non ballistic nuclear submarine a year from the tax take. Chance was much impressed, but I see eventually it was beaten by political judgment. That's a difficult one, it's one of the only ones the Treasury ever lose on. However, there was a third view which is the one that I questioned, which was to call up an analyst, because they were being told by the bookmakers, a very, very different story, that there was no future, the pop keys were the end of the world. The answer to this great conundrum is simple. Look at the share price of the quoted bookmakers in the last month. Pop teas don't exist. Therefore, the mystery remains. What is going to happen that's going to change this sport is called welfare. That's my last thing I'm going to talk about. In January, well, going back to the start of Toaster, the board asked one question of Kevin Ackerman of what the biggest, if any, issues there were against doing the investment. And the answer to that was welfare. We, the second question was, could we do something and remove it as an issue? The answer was yes. It's taken three and a half years, but I'm very pleased to say that two weeks ago we had a zero waiting list for rehoming of greyhounds at Toaster. To achieve that has not been easy. Firstly, we made the commitment that we were going to do it. Secondly, all of our graded runners, their owners and or trainers, 
have to contribute £200, which is matched by toast of racecourse, into effectively a sort of canine pension fund, which provides the core of where we're trying to get to. The next thing that we have done is to publish on the racetrack individual basis the injury statistics that we sustain. So we can go with a good conscience and explain where our position is and what we have done about it. We also, of course, are very lucky to have Polly Smith, who is our resident vet. That is an investment which will get bigger. I believe that Polly will have a veterinary assistant by next year and is unprecedented on most horse tracks and all greyhound tracks. All of this is to produce what I believe we will announce at Toaster this autumn, which is a Toaster standard. Because if we are going to sell a global product, it's going to need a little E on the screen. And that will indicate that this is a welfare guaranteed ethical picture. In markets like the United States, that is going to be absolutely fundamental. And to do that will then guarantee the kind of growth and economic benefit that will not only help greyhound racing, will not only help the exchequer in this country, but above all, the big winners will be the greyhounds themselves, the true stars of the show, without whom none of us would be sitting in this room today. Thank you very much.